Josh Schneider here with another tailgate technology session brought to you by Frontier Precision. Today we're going to be talking about the GPS search function that we use with our Trimble robotic equipment. Specifically today we're going to be using the Trimble S7 along with the Trimble TSC7 controller. It has an internal GPS that we're going to be using. It's about a two to four meter accurate setup. All right, so with that, let's get going. Fire up the TSC7. All right, so you can see access brings us into our menu screen right away. I already have my project folder set up. Just gonna show you our job that I have set up here. I'm gonna be doing a scale factor one for my coordinate system. Uh, and we're gonna be doing some uh, assumed coordinates out here. I'm gonna accept that, open that guy up. I'm gonna go back into my menu here, key in a point. I'm gonna be calling this point one and we'll just go ahead and code it as a control point giving it some coordinates for today. Mark it as a control point and storing that. All right, so you can see our uh, triangular control icon on the screen now, it's all set up. Okay. Zoom to center that guy. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get the instrument set up and Go from there. All right, we got the uh, instrument all set up. We got our rover rod all put together here. Um, we're going to be using the multi track uh, MT1000 target today. Uh, that has our active tracking technology for the S7, which gives it that strength and confidence when you're going through brush or in other urban areas where ha you have a lot of other reflective targets around you. Um, all right, so with that, you can see on our screen, we have on the top there our connections. We're connected with our robot. You see the image of the robot. You see our prism as well. So one of the things we want to get rolling here first is just to make sure we have the correct prism selected. So if I tap the prism there, you can set up as many targets as you wish. We recommend, again, setting up those targets ahead of time. You can all have them set to the multi-track, for example, and just have all your different rod heights pre-done in there. That'll eliminate that human error aspect of things. Um, if I'm switching from six and a half foot to seven to eight, very quickly without having to manually key that in. I'm just gonna edit that so you can see what I have it set to. There's our 6.5 multi-track. I'm gonna be doing target ID number one with our MT-1000. I'm going to be using semi-active mode. You can also choose from passive or active. And semi-active is going to be our more accurate method. Uh, it allows us to use the active tracking technology, but then when you want to enable that measurement, it'll switch to passive, lock on to the center of the glass, and take that measurement and back to act, uh, active tracking um, simultaneously. So. And then you can give it a display name. All right, so I'm going to be accepting that one. Okay, I've already pre-keyed in my point that I'm sitting on. So let's just go ahead and uh, head out and get our backside shot in. All right, one tool I like to do before I get too far away from it, I do want to make sure that the instrument is locking onto me okay and following me as I'm going to my backside location. So I can either manually turn over the tangents to lock onto it. Um, I can hit my instrument icon, I go to joystick. You can also hit your video feed button too. So right now you can look at uh, the clouds today. I'm just joysticking with the joystick on my TSC7 controller here, and you can see it bringing it back down. And over to my location. Once you get anywhere close to it, you can either snap on the screen and it'll lock on to you that way as well. All right, so now I know I'm locked on, let's head on out to my back site. All right, again, if I cared about these two points, I could have pre-keyed in um, coordinates for the backside as well as I did for the, the point the total station was on. I could also have a hub nail or spike in the ground ahead of time too to reobserve these points later on. But for today, this will be just fine. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead into my menu, measure, tap my S7. I'm gonna be doing a station setup today. Looks pretty close on our temp. 
All right, so what point are we setting on? You can see it remembered that point from before. If again, I cared about the point that the instrument was on, I would go ahead and measure that up. I do like to use the bottom of a notch on the instrument for that part of things. Uh, a little bit more accurate, you're not bending the tape as much to pull it up to a true height location. But you can switch that location by hitting that right arrow. I'm just gonna give it an estimate for today. All right, now it wants to know what back sight we're actually measuring to. This is gonna be point number two. I'll call it CP. Backside height is again our rod, so that's going to be our 6.5. All right, heading off to the east today, so I'm going to go ahead and do 90. Let's level ourselves up and measure. All right, there's our information. Looks good. We're going to get that stored. All right. So you can already hear the GPS search kicked in and told me it was ready. Um, when I'm using the internal GPS on board here, uh, I don't entirely trust the two to four meter accurate as of yet. The reason for that is I've walked pretty much a straight line from the instrument out to my backside. So all the GPS information that it's recording and basically creating a resection back to the gun to give it some kind of global coordinate so it knows where it's at, um, is all been in a straight line. So a straight line resection as we know, isn't the best way of doing that. So I do like to give it a little bit of an arc to make it more accurate. If I was to hit GPS right now within a straight line, your total station might do something like this. All right, so basically it just looked off into space because again, it did not like that straight line resection that we did. So I need to clear that out a little bit. And I wanna give it some new GPS values to base from. All right, in order to do that, we're gonna hit our menu drop down. We're going to be going into the instrument up to target controls and if you go ahead and scroll down here towards the bottom you can see our gps search function it is currently turned on in order to use the internal gps um, on here we want to be using auxiliary gps not the trimble gnss that's our um, say our r12 head it shows internal gps receiver type as well all right so you can also now hit the GPS soft key on bottom. It shows your latency, how many points are within that solution. And again, the longer you're maintaining and I'm talking, it's collecting more positions. But again, I don't like those all in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset it. Zeroes out all of those logged positions. So you can see the total uh, points in the solution there went down to zero, how many satellites we're tracking. So at this point now, I'm gonna go ahead and begin to walk in an arc. You can see it start to gather a few points in the solution. I'm gonna stay within my camera feed here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and work my way back again over into this field. So we're walking behind a tree. All right, if you heard our GPS search ready kick in, that means we hit our minimum of five points in the solution. So let's go ahead and test out that GPS search function. Uh, for me to test it out for you, I'm just going to go ahead and turn off my, um, my auto lock function. I'm going to go ahead and accept my, my search here and accept that to pull back out here as well. Okay. All right, so you can see my uh, auto lock is off, so it's not currently following me. S, the fun that. <laughs> Let's just come over here, switch my auto lock back on. All right. So one of the other things I did was I set up my one of my function keys to be my search routine. If I hit my menu drop down, you can see under favorites there. If I hit the little pencil icon, I can go into my function keys. And you can see my F4 is set up for the search routine. All right. It'll just make it faster um, when you're in the field, just a quick button press. So if I go ahead now and hit my F4, the total station will turn within that two to four meter uh, range and try and lock onto you. The further away you are from the instrument, 
the quicker that lock will happen because it kind of has that fan, fanning beam where it's looking for you. All right, let's try that again just out a little ways. This time, why don't I go ahead and just lock it. There we go. All right, out a little ways again. Let's just see where that thing's looking at real quick. So I'm gonna hit my video. So you can see where it's at. And you see again, since I was closer, the, um, the instrument was pointing a little bit higher too. I'm further out now. My multi-track's on, so I'm gonna hit my F4. Searching. Goes into the search mode. There we have, locked on. All right, great tool. Um, it speeds up, especially if you have a lot of things going on on that job site, a um, lot of movement happening. If your instrument doesn't have that video function, uh, GPS search is going to um, take away a lot of that, that downtime that's used for searching and looking for you. All you gotta know is, is how to turn it on and, and how to use it correctly. All right. All right, cool. Well, thank you again for your time here. I'm going to go ahead and head on back to the truck and uh, get everything put away. Until next time, thank you. Mm -hmm.